What's up everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to do a little bit of a physics experiment and at the same time we're going to have a little bit of a physics lesson. This is about water. Water is such an important piece of who we are and what we do as a profession and it's, it's absolutely essential that you understand the physics behind it because once you understand the correspondence of pressure and temperature, you'll also understand the correspondence of vacuum and temperature and water. It's actually fascinating. It really is. So let's go ahead and take a look. I've got a very harsh graph, Joan, drawn behind me of water in a vacuum. And you can hear over there, I actually have a vacuum chamber running and I'm drying out circuit boards. You can do more than just circuit boards. You can also dry out things like cell phones with a, a vacuum. It's kind of crazy. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look over here. I'll give you guys a little bit of an explanation of why you can use vacuum to dry out a cell phone. Look at that in there. That is boiling water, folks. And it's water that's almost ready to tip over, I admit. <laughs> it's going to tip over because this guy's vibrating. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, folks, over here I have a graph, and, and excuse how crude it is. I am currently in Houston, Texas, which is approximately sea level. Let's say 14.7 PSI. I know, folks, vacuum is not good to talk in PSI. I get it, but that's what we're going to do here today because when we're talking about sterilizers and vacuum systems, it's going to probably be in PSI for the most part, maybe bar, millibar. But So here we go, sea level, 14.7 PSI. Water boils at 100 degrees, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees C. And here's the thing, the bar down at the bottom is a total vacuum. So as the temperature gets closer to a total vacuum, it boils at a lower and lower temperature. And you look down here, you see that water boils. Notice it doesn't go all the way to vacuum because it's physically almost impossible to get a perfect vacuum. But when you get down to let's say 29 inches of mercury, which is pretty low of a vacuum. It's pretty low. Water is going to boil at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 23.89 degrees C, which is why over here you can see that water is boiling away. Now I did say 75 degrees C and it is winter time here in Texas. So this garage is not the warmest thing. And there's things like the stainless steel that are going to cool it off. So in order to make it boil and evaporate all the uh, water that's on that circuit board, you see that giant chunk of aluminum in there? It's been heated with a torch. So it's heated, and mind you, it's not heating that glass to no 100 degrees. It's pretty cool inside that thing, but anything that's touching the surface is going to warm up just enough to get that 75 to 78 degree magical mark. That board was absolutely soaked. And here, I can shut the pump off too. You can shut the pump off, you notice it's still drawing quite the vacuum right here. We're at about 28, 29 inches of mercury. And it stopped boiling, but it's got quite the vacuum in there. As soon as I, as soon as I start that pump back up, it's going to start boiling again. Now, why is that? because as it evaporates, it's actually creating gas and it's returning the chamber to just above the pressure that it needs to uh, have liquid. So the water is going to continue to boil as soon as I turn that back on. Now, why is that important? Well, it's interesting because at sea level we're at 14.7 PSI, but if you're in Denver, if you're in Denver, the water is going to boil at a different temperature, a lower temperature. And that's why food takes longer to cook in higher elevations. It's because your water is not getting to that higher temperature. It needs to be at the higher temperature to thoroughly cook that food at a faster rate. Since it doesn't reach that high of a rate, you have to add minutes onto the cook time. Now, the inverse of this is how do you get water above 100 degrees? See, water boils at 100 degrees. It doesn't want to get warmer than 100 degrees. So now how does a steam sterilizer get to 275 degrees? You add pressure. Here in this graph, we're taking away pressure and lowering the boil point 
If you add pressure, you're increasing the boiling point. It's the inverse, which is absolutely fascinating. Steam sterilizer, 275 degrees. It's gonna be about 30 PSI. And that's how you know if you got temperature, you got pressure. Because unless you got a heating element around the chamber of that sterilizer, you're not gonna to get to 275 degrees unless you have pressure. So there's a direct relation when you're talking water and steam, the temperature and the pressure are completely related. So technically, we would see a V like that for pressure. So you add pressure and you get hiring boiling point. There you go, folks, just a quick demo. I'm experimenting here with a new device because I want to be able to thoroughly clean circuit boards and also save things like phones. You put them in a vacuum and with a, a slight heating source, you can easily boil out all the water that is on the circuit board, including the stuff that's hidden under those SMD chips, which is extremely difficult to get out thoroughly. I can place it in a vacuum on a heater like that and leave it in there for an hour or so, it comes out perfectly dry. It's crazy. Thanks for watching, folks. That's a little demo on physics and water and pressure and cell phones that have water damage. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned something.